Usually, owning an exotic like a Ferrari entails waking up at the crack of dawn to get the most out of your drive. Get out of the city onto fun roads before traffic builds up and the heat of the day actually gets to the car. But with a Ferrari Portofino M, things are switched up just a little bit. It's the most usable Ferrari ever. We're going to do things a little differently. Instead of an early breakfast, we're going to attempt a late brunch in the most accessible prancing horse. Our destination is about 60 kilometers away and given the late departure, this review is going to focus on the more practical aspects of this exotic we don't normally get a chance to experience. Heading out in the middle of Pekar traffic does mean that your speeds on the road aren't really limited by the road conditions but by traffic as well. And that means putting this 3.9 litre twin turbo V8 through the ringer in a very different way. To refresh your memory, there's more to this midlife update of the Portofino than its larger air intakes up front, vents in the hood and more aggressive diffuser at the rear. The M stands for Modificato and to that effect, the 3.9 litre twin turbo V8 makes 20 PS more for a total of 620 PS and 716 Newton meters. Also worth putting aside for the moment, are the revised cam profiles and faster spinning turbos. What deserves to be talked about is the new 8-speed DCT. Now, it's the same gearbox that's gone into the Roma, it's the same one that's gone into the SF90, though it has been tweaked a bit for application in Portofino M. The first seven ratios are shorter together, whereas the 8 is a slightly longer ratio, and I find myself in 8 right now doing 70 in the city and the engine is taking over at 1000 rpm. Trundling along in traffic, I feel completely at ease with the box in auto mode. Of course, all it takes is a couple of pulls on these lovely paddle shifters, these really wide paddle shifters, put you in a little more favorable spot in the power band. That being said, all of that 765 Nm of torque does peak relatively and you don't really need to rev this car out to build surprising pace. Of course, driving it in the city isn't all glove faces. When you do get the moment and you get the opportunity to stretch it up, again, there's just so much you can get done well below 2000 RPM. It, it's shocking. You would think a Ferrari V8 would be high strung. That's really not the case and this gearbox definitely does keep efficiency in mind when it's running you through the gears. In fact, with the Manitino set in comfort, even throttle response isn't as typically sharp as you would expect from a Ferrari. Of course, I planted my right foot all the way down when the opportunity presented itself, but considering the slippery surface of most of Mumbai's roads, it makes for instant entertainment as the rear tyres struggle to find grip. And the Portofino M spark plug is intelligent enough to dial back the torque in those lower gears so that you don't really end up overwhelming the rear tyres. The one thing that's worth noting about this DCT gearbox is a slight reluctancy to shift down from second at very low speeds. So it can sometimes feel like you've got to throw the throttle a little more than what feels comfortable just to get the car to move. Now of course it does go back in first at next to crawl speeds, but you could always just take manual control. Typically when I jump into a car, I tend to set driver's seat at the lowest position possible and bring the wheel towards me and lower the wheel as well. And that's exactly what I've done in the Portofino M and I've still got great visibility out. The, the windscreen is of course large and expansive. The rear windscreen isn't the largest but you do get a decent view out and of course looking in these large again rear view mirrors gives you such a tantalizing view of the flanks. Boy, 
it's a good thing that you can see bits of the car that you're driving as you're driving it. And trust me, when you're driving a Ferrari in our kind of traffic and our conditions on these roads, the first 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes even, you are holding your breath at every small potential incident. In fact, apart from the slight learning curve of having all the controls on the steering wheel, I'd actually argue that this makes life so much easier. You've got your turn indicators right on the wheel itself. You've got your headlight and flasher functions on the wheel itself. And that just makes everything available at literally the tips of your finger. This car is fitted with the optional magneto rheological dampers and they do adapt to the conditions and except for a slight popping motion at very low speeds which you can probably see now over this baby surface of this flyover, it's all good. Even though it doesn't lift up to increase ground clearance at the front, the M gets over most speed breakers without a fuss, which was something of a surprise. Okay, for context of just how Portofino M rides, it handles these brakes in the road pretty much the same way like any of the haunted up sports sedans do. And that's really saying something. Another pleasant surprise for me is the carbon ceramic brakes that the Portofino M comes standard with. Now you would imagine that CCMs at very low speeds or when they're cold tend to be a little grabby, but that wasn't really the case. Even when we started off on this drive with absolutely no heat in the brakes, they offered the perfect amount of modulation to manage bumper to bumper traffic without it really breaking into a sweat. But what is worth noting is that compared to the previous Portofino, which I remember feeling a little laggy, especially in those kickdown circumstances, this gearbox feels lightning quick. Let me give you some context there. If you do put your foot down, but just very slightly, you'll find the box shifting up below 2000 RPM, but you'll still find yourself in high triple digit speeds in no time at all. It's actually sort of baffling to think that this is Ferrari's entry-level car and it makes as much power as the 612 did about a decade back which was Ferrari's flagship. That's nuts. Now importantly, when you're on the highway doing about 120 in 8, you're still under 2000 RPM. I think you're at about 1900 or 1950 RPM. So this car can be a very good relaxed cruiser as well. In fact, my distance to MT readout, considering I've been taking it easy, is saying 702 kilometers. I stand for a grand daughter. Of course, while a midday drive can't really give you the opportunity to push dynamics to the limit, it does allow you to enjoy a car like the Portofino M for what it is, an extremely friendly and easy to drive everyday exotic that can as quickly put a smile on your face as it does on the faces of the people you pass. Because after all, every drive in a Ferrari is a pretty much special experience in itself.